our time. I'm your host, Edith Young Obot, and with me I have Miss Aviola and Ophili, right? Yeah. Okay. And I'm really excited about this episode because as you guys can see, the beautiful art over here. Um, this side is by Mr. Ophili, and this side is by Miss Aviola. Mm -hmm. So, so to kick things off, let's get started. Tell us about yourself, what school you went to, what degrees you have, what profession you're in. So we start off with Miss Aviola. Well, so my name is Aviola Mubara, and I was born and raised in Italy. Ooh. Uh, my parents are Nigerians, so you know, I represent Nigeria. Okay. And I went to high school there. I came here um, after high school. I went to Baylor University. Okay. I got Baylor my Bears. undergrad in uh, Spanish. And then after that, I went huh. overseas and played basketball professionally for 10 years. Wow. And I ended up getting my uh, master's in international business management in London, at the University of East London. And then I came back, and last year I started working at, at Accenture as a business consultant. Yeah, yeah. And I just made a year last this February. So, wow, that's a lot to swallow right there. <laughs> like she hit I'm us like, with. What? I was in this international. This this. I that's mean, okay. Cool. Just international. Right. Huh? Right. Yes. That was too much. <laughs> I'm international. I wasn't. We. I wasn't what? really ready for. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> and then I, I have to go after you. Like. Uh, um, that's okay. But um, yeah. So my name is Chikuno. So Philly. Um, I grew up in Nigeria. Okay. Um, Studied in Nigeria secondary school. Secondary school, we don't do high school. <laughs> secondary school. Then I came here for um, school in 2007, industrial designs, oh, in okay. University of Houston. Okay, Oak Oak Oak. Oak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I graduated 2013 and I just didn't want to do my major anymore. <laughs> um, I, I, in 2010, I was dabbling into this hosting and emceeing in school okay. and an NSA event, you know. And NSA all of a sudden, is like, Nigerian Student. Students Association. So the people village. out there, they may yeah, not know. Yeah. Okay. So I, I came out and I just said, uh, I met a friend, two friends, Andrew and David. Okay. And we'll be making people laugh in the house. Let's make people laugh, you know, okay. worldwide. Did a couple of videos and boom, we blew, you know. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, so I'm an entertainer, a comedian, artist, you know. The art thing, I've been doing art all my life, okay. but when I really took it serious was here, um, 2017. So like last year? Like last year, like <laughs> okay. I was like, okay, let's hey, do this. It's you know our I mean? time, yeah. literally. Okay. And I just started pushing from there. So entertainer, comedian, artist, graphic designer, and caricaturist. I'm just nice. gonna both of you guys slash 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 behind the scenes, right? Right? You can't be one dimensional. You started right. with this one slash this slash, then you this, slash this. as well, Amen. as well. So I kind of want to talk about uh, you guys' majors, right? Yeah. So you said you majored in Spanish. How like tell me about that? Well. You both are Nigerian, so you know that was not an option, option in the chat. Right. Box. Yeah, I'm uh, I started off as uh, pre med. Uh, hey. Hey. Now, let's not so around. correct. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I started off as pre med, but then, um, see, like, coming from Italy, basketball was one thing, but like in Italy, we don't have school and basketball together. Oh. So you focus on school and you focus on basketball. When I came here and started playing college basketball, there was no life. Like, I just had to really like pick and choose my battles, right. and yeah. I knew basketball was going to be my career initially okay so I picked a major that a I like because I like I, I'm really interested in cultures internationally like I just like languages and cultures mm -hmm. and things like that so I picked the language that I didn't know and I wanted to learn and at the same time I knew I was not gonna go to medical school like at that point it was like look this is just not gonna happen right yeah. a I'm not paying for it <laughs> B, I'm not going back to Italy which is free but I'm not I'm not I have no intentions of going back to Italy so mm -hmm. that was the choice that just kind of happened that way, and, uh, oh. and it worked out. Wow, a Nigerian, Italian, Italian Spanish-speaking <laughs> woman right here. Well, if I help, if you want, if you like to know, I also speak Hebrew. Whoa. Listen, okay, so you gonna you gonna give us a little bit of uh, to some like tell us, give numbers. us a little a little you know a taste of some of this language that you know Spanish, Hebrew, Italian. Well, what else? Yoruba. Yoruba. Well, Yoruba, I like, understand fluently. When I speak, they make fun of me. So, but you know, your, your accent is a little, you know. Okay, okay so say, tell us something in Hebrew. Shalom uh, lekula, Hi, everyone. Thanks. And in Spanish. 
All I heard was gracias, and I know that made thank you. I said everybody speak, everybody does speak Spanish, but um, thank you very much for having me here. Okay, wow. and then what else? Italian. Mi chiamo Viola, sono già detto sono italiana e sono contenta di essere qui con voi. This girl is fluent. Uh, wow, what, did, cool. what did you just say? I just say my name is Aviola and I'm uh, what is this? Oh, and I'm happy to be here with you guys. Man, oh, wow. that's it. You, you know, any Yoruba? Well, Yoruba, I'm Yoruba, so that's that's it. I don't say I understand she Yoruba, but I don't speak it very me. well, so okay. that's just not. Okay, she listen. <laughs> listen, you you pass all flying colors in my book. Wow. I don't know what. That's, that's hundred <laughs> percent. It's only pigeon I know. Right? Ah, uh, <laughs> small, small for me. Small, small, small. small. <laughs> okay, so Ophelia, you said um, you did um, industrial, industrial design. design. Industrial How did design. you get into that? So pretty much industrial design is product design. That's uh -huh. like you know pretty much from everything apart from houses, like drawers, tables, chairs, anything. Pretty okay. much that's an industrial design. But you you have to major in what you know fits you. Right. Um, from Nigeria, you would ask like what. What is industrial design? <laughs> so pretty much, I wanted to be a graphic artist. Okay. You know, from Nigeria, I knew that I wanted to do art, but that's another. You know, that's not the good thing for me <laughs> is that I was last. I'm last born, so all the so, brothers have done. They've done okay. all the dream works for the parents. <laughs> so now I can like you know play around and do some you know we spy it. You know? <laughs> So my dad wanted to do, me to do architecture so bad. Okay. He, did, he wanted it, me to do it so bad that I started to hate it. You know, that kind of like, you know, who is going to hire you in America? You are doing design, art, you know? <laughs> so my brother, okay, you know, he did research. He was already here and did a lot of research on how I could fuse, you know, the whole drawing right. with something that they will hire you for in America. And, you know, graphic designers, there are millions of graphic designers. Yeah. So how are you going to get a real job, you know? So my brother found this major, sent me pictures, and I just saw the pictures, and I was like, yeah. Okay. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do that. If they draw like this, I want to do this major, and that's how I came here. Okay. And I struggled. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got, I got the concept. Pretty much everything I'm doing now is okay. industrial designs, but I struggled in school, which is weird. You know. Hmm. Well, thank God, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you said you made a comment that like mm -hmm. you just didn't like what you're doing anymore, it, and you just kind of moved into. It's not like I didn't like it. It's just I knew that I was gonna. I struggled in school. Okay. So how do I come out and now go and apply for a job it's that I might struggle in, in you know, because I didn't get all the concepts. So gotcha. it's like, I know what to do, but if you hit me hard, I'm like, oh, snap, I'm lost. I know what you're asking me, but I cannot right. apply it the right way. Yeah. So why struggle in something when you're good at something else? Right. So when did you say, hey, you know what, in my mind, I'm going to go and follow what I know that I'm naturally good at? Um, because every time I followed everything I was naturally good at, I excelled. So it's like, why not? You know, and, and I, I didn't have that stress of, you know, doing what, you're wasting money. I didn't have it because my brothers had excelled beyond, you mm. know, our parents' expectations. So I could, I could <laughs> play around, you right. know, not much, but I could actually There's dabble. A little leeway. You know, See, I was I pushing my that. clothing line. I was doing things that my parents had never heard of in mm. their life. Right. But the thing is that it was getting back to them. Right. That, oh, your son, I, I have your son shit. My mom is like, my, my, my son, son shit. shit. <laughs> you, you understand? So everything is hitting them real Wait. quick. Oh, your, your son knows basket mount. Who is basket mount? You know, you get so all those right, things were hitting yeah. them. So they found out, okay, he's excelling in this thing. Let's just share support. But, you know, everything, this... Nigerian parents, it comes with money. Mm, right. If there's no money, then you're not succeeding. Right. So, we, you know, we had to make small money before they now were like, okay, let me give you some jokes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's besides the point. But, you know, you have to excel for your parents to love what you do. Yeah. That's, okay. that's just how it is. Very, very, from my very own much true. Perspective. Okay, yeah. so, Abiola, back to you. You said you played, like, y'all, she had a legit basketball professional basketball <laughs> career for 10 years like you see how she just kind of slid that yeah, in there like right. played basketball for 10 years i, did, I came up with oh, wait we're gonna pause on that let's, <laughs> let's go on back to the basketball for 10 years right. what what was the name of the team mm -hmm. what position so, did you play how'd you get into it after baylor so i baylor actually won a national oh, championship baylor. okay oh. so we were the first team to win a championship in 05 
And then after that, I played the first three years in Israel. That's how I learned Hebrew. Oh. Um, then from there, I went to Spain. No, I went to Hungary. I uh, played there just one season. Then Spain, one season. And then four seasons in uh, Italy, okay. which is my country. And yeah. I also played for the national team there. Wow. So Whoa, what? Yeah. You're a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody plays on the national <laughs> team. Let's say so that's is? what I did. And then my last year, um, wow. Like to transition to real life because transition from being an athlete to be not an athlete is the worst. It's hard. Yeah, tell us about that. It's, it's really, really hard. So, what I did was uh, I chose to finish my career in England. Um, UK basketball is not necessarily high level basketball, I don't, they don't really have a big budget. So, I knew they wouldn't be able to pay me. But I reached out to the coach and I told them that I know some schools and some teams have relationships. So I reached out to the coach, I told him I will play for you if you pay for my master's. Mm. And he was like, I know who you are, I can't afford you, I will pay for your master. So that's how I got it, and it was like, they pay for my master's and for my accommodation, but I wasn't getting a salary that year. So it was living off of my savings, but at the same time, preparing for the future, because, yeah. you know, yes, I do art, yes, I play basketball, but in the real world, me applying for a job with a, <laughs> with a, with a, with a basketball, <laughs> career and a Spanish degree is like, well, I mean, it's really interesting, but what can you do for me, right? That kind of reminds me of uh, the wow. movie Love and Basketball where she finishes playing overseas and then mm -hmm. she has to like transition. Actually, the movie they play in my hometown, Parma. Yeah. Like, yeah, that was hey. my hometown. Yeah. I knew a couple of players on that movie. Wow. Yeah. Listen, this girl, <laughs> <laughs> she's legit like a superstar. <laughs> no, 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 no. Right? <laughs> <Resume Day. laughs> okay, no, I'm right? I'm next. Okay. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Okay, so it was a consistent thing for me. So while playing overseas, I was able to basketball. Let's, let's be real; is is a job. It is. Yes. Yeah. But I work four hours a day. On mm -hmm. if it's like a real hard team, it's not. If not, it's two hours a day. Oh, <laughs> she's a beast, y'all. Yeah. That's why. Well, yeah. now I'm just saying we practice in the morning, practice in the evening, but then that's it, right? right. Yeah. So uh, different people, different things. For me, my time off was art. Right. I would right. paint. I would diffuse from painting because I was a very aggressive player, but my personality is not aggressive. So, like oh. me on the basketball court and me off is like two like separate. Okay. And art will help me go back to being me. Mm. Ah. So that's that's kind of how. That's nice. that's so tell us how you, I guess, started getting more serious about art. So honestly, because I've been painting since I was a kid. I was a kid that you know I don't have money. I'm a kid. <laughs> Mom, it's your birthday. Do you want me to buy you a gift with your money, or do you want me to make you? A gift? So I made the game, right? Come on. So yeah. I will draw it and just something. My brother was like good at writing. He does music and stuff like that. So he would like write poets and I would just make the paintings. And, um, but when I stopped painting, when I was overseas, I kept getting like feedback. Because I would post them, but I, it was for me. I wouldn't be right. painting for any other reason. I started getting good feedback to people saying, you should start your own website, you should sell it. I was like, you just like it because you're a basketball fan. Right. I didn't think they really legitimately liked my art. Mm -hmm. But when I started getting from people that didn't know my basketball side, I was like, okay, maybe they really do like it. Maybe, yeah. maybe, uh, so nine it. years ago, in October, I started artbyabio.com, like my website. Uh -huh. So it's like my online art gallery. Uh -huh. And I start putting my art up there, selling it, sharing events, and just kind of like progress from there. Okay. So I have a question to ask both of you guys. Both of yeah. y'all are in art. Y'all both are Nigerian, yeah. in a sense, right? Y'all come from that Nigerian household. So growing up in the Nigerian household, how was it like in terms of telling your parents or getting support? from your parents about entering the art like industry? So um, for me, um, growing up, pretty much um, I used to draw on the wall <laughs> in the house. So uh, you're that kid. Yeah, I'm the one. <laughs> I took all my mom's um, old university books and I was drawing at the, any space. I was drawing in at it. At the back. And, and I was getting out. I, was, I, I got whooped so much. I can imagine. But I couldn't stop. You know when it's like, I got more in like, intelligent with how I was doing it. So it's, mm -hmm. if they're flogging me for this side, there's one side my mom doesn't go to, so I would draw there, you know? So my brother was, all of them were drawing, mm -hmm. but they were drawing in the right place, in their own book. I don't have a book, you know, ah. it's like seven. So my brother got tired of the whole flogging him for what he loves, and he sat my parents down. I was like, you notice that you're flogging him, he's not stopping, that all you have to do is buy him a book, and buy him this um, crayon, and. That would solve the problem. So my mom, she, they, I think they came to America and she bought me this Crayola 64. It's just, <laughs> it's just, <laughs> I swear. It's like maybe a year ago that I found out that this thing is in Walmart. 
But when they bought this Crayola 64, I thought this was like Legit. heaven and earth. <laughs> I never lost a single crayon. Wow. Not a, because I cherished cherish it. Because it, they made yeah. it look like this thing I bought for you, you can never see it again. Wow. Oh, I was coloring. They were buying me paper, everything. And finally, what happened was, um, I think primary three or uh, primary elementary school, right? Okay. okay. I we, finally, we you. I, <laughs> primary school, you know, okay. I finally got a, <laughs> I, I got, I joined a competition, you know, and I came third. And, you know, hey. your parents are finally happy with you. you right. Know? And I started representing my school. Yeah. In secondary school, I represented them GS3, SS1, SS2, SS3. And I was killing it, you know. Killing first, it. Second, first, first. So at that time, your parents already know, okay, this is what he loves to do. Right. It's now how to transition into the money phase because they knew this yeah. is what I wanted to do. You yeah. know, when your parents ask you, what do you want to do? I say, I want to be, a, I want to be an artist. artist. <laughs> it doesn't even sound right, right. today, you know. Uh -huh. But my parents were ready. It's, they were ready for the art because yeah. that's the only thing I actually cared about. Yeah. The only thing I could talk about yeah. and sports. And they know the sports life is hard. Yeah, it's it even from it Nigeria. You own is even better. You had <laughs> coming from Nigeria and telling your parents you want to run track. <laughs> what? Nigeria doesn't even have a track team that is worthy of you know celebrating. You now want to say track. <laughs> wow. Can you even run? <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. So right from time I was already setting their mind up for that. So they were they were supportive. They were ready. Okay. Yeah, they they were always supportive. I used to draw in church. That's my mm -hmm. mom's pet peeve. Drawing in church. Yeah, I was drawing. I'm sure you need uh, to be listening to, to the word. Yeah, I was drawing <laughs> in church, but I used to draw, so I won't get in trouble. I will not draw her friends. Ah. You know, you know, so it's like on, smart. Before she hits me, I'm like, that's auntie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, man. Okay. But we thank God they, they were ready. Okay. That, I think that was that's my own story. They were ready for the art. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to go on a quick break and Abiola is going to tell us her story and how yeah. supportive her family was. So stay tuned. Make sure you guys follow us on Facebook and Instagram at It's Our Time Talk Show. Um, so if you're just catching us, Ophelia was telling us how supportive his parents were. And now we're going to move on to Miss Abiola and tell her. And she's going to tell us about how her family was in terms of art and her right. industry and getting into it. So my parents, when it comes to art, there weren't there was really no like lack of support or mm -hmm. support thereof to begin with. Okay. Um, my mom kept telling her friends I was in medical school two years after I told her I was not anymore. So <laughs> See, why, why do Nigerian parents do that? I don't know. Why do they do but, that? Um, don't do that, y'all. So they were more so concerned about the basketball life. Because ah. they were like, so you're a basketball player? Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what I am. Like, I'm getting yeah. paid for it. So yeah, that's the. That's, but that's the thing the real is, profession. I think I think the thing that was different for me is I grew up in Italy. Mm. So yes, it was a Nigerian household. Yes, I grew up in Nigerian culture. Like yes, I I um, prostrate when I see my grandma. Like I know all the you know the ballet culture. and all that stuff. Right. But at the same time, I grew up in Europe. So 
you might not like what I want to do, but I really don't care. <laughs> yeah. Because at the end of the day, if I think about it like in a very like objective way, mm -hmm. you gave me life to create life. So this is my life. Right. My like this may be a little bit morbid, but at the end of the day, it's a cycle, right? Yeah. Once you are gone, I'm not going to be unhappy because I want to do what you wanted. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm still going to be on this planet, so yeah. I'm going to have to be happy with my choice. Right. So at the end of the day, and I, I always been a very headstrong kid, like growing up. <laughs> so they kind of just were like, you know, what like. You can't win with this. Just kind of right. like really. Uh, do I realized that she wants to do this, so let's just allow her. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the thing. There was no allowing. Like I was never a person that asked for permission. I was oh, anyway. You know, She's doing it. I left. Like, I left when I, was, when, I, when I graduated high school. I said I was going to college. I, I packed my stuff and left. And I came here. I, I wasn't recruited. I showed up at Baylor University. I told Coach Murky I would like to, uh, play. to play college basketball. She gave me a full on scholarship. And the next wow. year, I flew out. Wow. So I always went after what I wanted, and I went for it. I didn't ask, I didn't ask for help, right. but I also didn't ask for permission. Right. Ooh. So at the end of the day, as long as I didn't do anything that disrespected you, it's yeah. something you could be proud of. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't feel like I ever had to really give an explanation. Right. At the end of the day, I'm building my own future. And right. So the art actually was something that... So my mom has a pending friendship request on Facebook for about 10 years now. That's never going to be accepted. I just added my mom. And she like kept asking me, why don't you accept me? Like, mother, because you're my mom, not my friend. I cannot have you asking me about each individual in my pictures. So we will not do that. I feel that. And uh, But she has access to my art page. So okay. she shares everything. Yeah. She just likes and shares. Don't you just love that? Your prayers are like the ultimate promoter. My like. mom Googles me. Because <laughs> she told me something once. Oh, that was so good that she did. I was like, how do you know? Like, I haven't spoken to you yet. Oh, I Googled you. I was like, mother, just ask me. That's so weird. Don't Google me. That's just weird. I just want to know. I know. just want to know what my daughter is doing <laughs> out there <laughs> on the internet. Oh, and my dad, uh, my dad was, is, was an architect, actually. No. Ah, so okay. yeah, he studied architecture uh, in Italy. That's why they moved there, because he went mm. there for, the, for university to do architecture. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm pretty sure that's where the artistic side came from. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. And um, me and my dad are very similar, yeah. <laughs> like character-wise. So we bump heads, mm. but at the same time, you know Nigerians, like we are like by definition the most nomadic people. Mm, right. So living in Italy is by far one of the most racist countries out there so far. Yeah. So he got his degree but could not get a job as an architect as yeah. a black man and he refused to do anything less. Mm -hmm. So he moved back to Nigeria to work. Mm -hmm. So he was, you know, moving back and back forth. Back and forth, yeah. But me being that little girl, if I don't see you for like seven months, I'm mad at you at this yeah, point. Yeah, we have a problem. <laughs> so <laughs> even though we were super close and we bumped heads, at one point I was just kind of like over him. I was like, dude, I've not seen you in like two years. Ah, your opinion really don't really care. Ah. So it was kind of like that. It was just like yeah. back and forth, back and forth. So he was always proud of me, but at the same time, he also knew that at the end of the day, I was going to do what I wanted to do. Right. And they had their hands full with my brother anyway, so. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I always did well. Like, I was excelled in school. Like, in high school, like, in Italy, we have um, science. I went to a scientific high school. Okay. So it was five years, you know, so like Latin, so like that's what, that's like a preparatory school for people that is going to go to university. Like, you do not have any skills to have a job after the high school because you are going to go to the university. Right. My brother went to a more technical school where he was learning about computers and stuff because he was not like a school guy. So just to prepare you just in case, even though you have to go to university, <laughs> mm. we get you like a high school where you can be like an engineer and right after. Yeah. Thing. Okay. But at the end of the day, the support is there now just because they see it doing well and they keep asking me and like, oh, I Google your name and I see art everywhere. And then I had um, a newspaper when I went to Nigeria, uh, I was interviewed. Mm. And it took me to, I forgot what channel it was, but it was like a news channel. Uh -huh. So I did an interview there. Because um, when I went there, I actually did um, like a free basketball camp for little kids. Oh, in nice. School. Yeah. So they interviewed me about that and about my art. So like they, they, them seeing that it's being recognized in different places. You know, when I was in Spain, it was in the newspaper. Like, so there's different places where my art is being recognized. Yeah. And I think it's also because an athlete that does art is just like a different combination. Exactly. So yeah. it gets people like interested in it. Yeah. So they are they're proud. They, there was no never a lack of support. Right. But they were not be what they expected me to be. Right. But guess what? <laughs> right. I am. You're yeah, right. So. There you go. So it sounds like for both of you guys, your parents saw what the you know, what you guys were doing mm -hmm. and in turn like they became promoters <laughs> of 
what you guys are doing, which is just awesome. Yeah. So I'm gonna ask y'all one more question and we're gonna get into these beautiful pieces here. So moving to Houston, living in America, how has that uh, been for you guys in terms of your background? I know for you say you came from Nigeria, you yeah. born and raised there, and then mm -hmm. you born and raised in Italy everywhere. and then traveled <laughs> everywhere and now you're mm -hmm. here in America. How has that, you know, we're I've been highlighting everybody in the African diaspora, right? Whether you were from afar or you were born here. So I'm kind of interested or intrigued to know about your experience yeah. leading America here, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, experience. It's, it's all right. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, it's all right. You know, I was excited to come here like every, you know, kid that wants to come to America, you know, right. happy. Was it what you expected it to be? Yeah, I've mm -hmm. I've come with my parents once, you know, to see mm -hmm. this America, you know. Right. But you know, I came again for school, and it's, it's I had my brothers were already here, so right. the transition wasn't as difficult. Okay. You know, I had a lot of friends already once gotcha. I came in, and I would just I think for me, my transition was just finding myself mm -hmm. because the major really threw me off. So it's like I was really struggling in school. Okay. But outside of school, I knew who I was. Right. But in school, I was really like, yes. what am I doing here? School can definitely you know? question. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the good thing about university is that you find yourself. It's not always about this, the major. Right. It's about finding yourself. Yeah. That's why you should go to school. That, that's my own. Go to school not for the studies, but for the interaction. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, I, it was a good transition. It wasn't stressful at all. Okay. And Abiola? For me, it was interesting because... Like you grew up in Nigeria, so mm -hmm. when you walk outside, everybody looks like you. Yeah. I grew up in Italy. Right. I walk outside my house, and nobody looks like me. Right. Wow. It's a white country. Yeah. So coming here initially was awesome because I could go unnoticed. Like I could just walk down the street, and nobody noticed me, other than the fact that I'm six feet tall. Mm -hmm. There's really nothing else that you just can like have to take a double take for, right? Right. But at the same time, after my first year, I was almost ready to go back because of the cultural shock. Because there's yeah. a lot of things I did not understand in this country, and then. <laughs> For being such a diverse country, it's also very like divided. Mm -hmm. And I mean, majority of my friends, ninety nine percent of my friends here are black. Like I have a couple of white friends from like by the basketball team, like from college. Mm -hmm. But it was just like who I had around, which I like because I was like, ah, everybody looks like me now. Because I mean, right. unless I'm going to Nigeria, which is you know my family, but there you're not defined by your skin color. You are Nigerian, you're Yoruba, you're Igbo, you're whatever. Like yeah. the fact that you're black is like obvious. Like, right. It, it doesn't have to be like said. Mm -hmm. But here it's like black, this African, um, and it was, it was just confusing to me. I was like, dude, like, what is your name? Like, why is that African American or Black American like the first right. thing has to come first? So that was hard for me to understand at first. Right. And also I had a thing that my dad told me once because my brother wanted to come here. Mm -hmm. My dad told him no. Negative. <laughs> it's, it, you're going to the UK. You're not coming to America to become was <laughs> a statistic or whatever. Mm -hmm. So he, he sent him to London. But he told me because I couldn't understand like where they were coming from either side mm -hmm. initially. And my dad told me once was like, I was not raised as a black man. I was raised as a man. Mm. And I was like, that kind of makes sense. Yeah. Because you don't ever have to check a box that's, that says what your right. skin color is. Like you mm. never, you're just a person. And yeah. then your culture is what carries you, not exactly. your skin color. But here everything was very so like, you have skin to like color, pick and choose. Yeah. This city. So like, I've never seen that before. When right. you have to choose like the box of your ethnic <laughs> group. I told my coach, like, dude, I'm not African American. I don't see African I, I here. Other. <laughs> I, I put other all the I time because I mean, right. my culture is Italian. My blood is Nigerian, and I reside here. But that doesn't. I'm not classifiable. So that was the one thing I had a hard time with yeah. when I came here, like classification. That was the main thing that. But other than that, I I can like. You know, being able to be in a diverse place and just around yeah, yeah. different people all the time and not just one cookie cutter mm -hmm. Italian person. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so we're going to uh, move on to the art. Um, Ophelia, you have the art right here with the beautiful woman with the head wrap. Gilly. The gele, right? <laughs> so can you explain like what's going on here? What's the inspiration behind your art? Um, so for this one, I call it Melanin, melanin Poppins. <laughs> Melanin Poppins. Ah, yeah. That's clever. That's clever. Yeah. That's clever. So okay, play off of Mary Poppins. You know. Okay. <laughs> but um, it's, you know, we're in this era of, you know, knowing your identity and, you know, associating with who you are mm -hmm. as a person. And also, I wanted to push the whole head wrap 
you know, every work I do has culture behind it. Right. And um, I want people to know about the material and that whatever you see came from us, like what right. you're wearing, yeah. people need to know because before you know it, this thing will be in Zara. And Zara <laughs> That's see it. Because I've seen it. No comment, Zara. But, you know. <laughs> it's made in China. Can you imagine? Right. When it came from us, you know. So I'm, I'm trying to push, you know, our culture and us loving our you know, positive, you know, like your body, like your skin right. color. Yeah. You know, you don't have to add to now. It's light skin, <laughs> complexion stuff. You know, that's, be happy with who you are. Right. Much. So okay. Mel melanin is popping. Melanin popping. And where can they find your art? Um, my art, right now it's on Instagram. Okay. I'm in works of making uh, my website. Okay. So I can push everything on one platform. Okay. But right now I have a coloring book. Oh, nice. That, um, I brought food. Uh, in case anybody wants to see, it's another Gilly Girl movement, Ooh, you know. So I, on, I just created these coloring books, and it has a whole load of pictures nice. of African Listen. beauties Listen. everywhere, you know. Okay. And you get to color it with your own, you know, Yo. colors, you know. Do so your a lot of people thing. are into like adult coloring books too, yeah. and for kids. So and it's therapeutic, awesome. you know. Yeah. For I, I use it on the plane when I travel, so okay, it's a, it's a good thing. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Aviola, your beautiful piece here with the, is this an earring? Yeah. Or? Okay. It's a hanging earring. So she doesn't have a name yet. I asked people on Instagram to help me name her. Okay. Uh, someone told me, uh, Je ne l'ai pas, something. It was like, don't leave me in French. And mm -hmm. I really like that name because yeah. she said it gave her like a lingering, like the lingering yeah. look that she has going on. Yeah. But this piece for me was a testament to patience because I have zero. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so Very I'm doing detailed. all the yeah all the details and trying yeah. to do the background with the texture. Um, this is actually the most flat painting that I have. I usually mm -hmm. like use texture as well, but I use it like it differently than he does. So I do three D stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like if I paint someone with a skirt, the skirt will come out. And right. Just like that. Yeah. But I wanted to try some patience, so I played with this one right here, and um, I like her. Like she came out kind of like what envisioned yeah. her to be. Uh -huh. Um. So like my my inspiration are black women because. I'm one. That's what there I see in the mirror every time I wake up. That's yeah. who I, you know, relate to, and that's who I um, see myself in. And okay. um, I started painting them because growing up in Italy, once again, I didn't see people that look like me. So I'm right. like, you know what? Since yeah. I don't see it, I'll just go paint it. Mm. Okay. And that's how it just kind of, kind of started. And um, so, like right now, I'm working on a series of paintings that are pictures that were made it like in the Renaissance. Okay. But I'm changing them to oh. look like us. Okay. Nice. So that's taking too long. Okay. No patience. patience. That's yeah. what you patience. Yeah, you so where can we find this? The, your paintings or this? So painting? all my work can be found at uh, artbyabiola.com. Okay. That is my, my website, and I also um, I have different ways to show my art as well because uh -huh. I do have higher prices because I like to keep them like a gallery like pricing or whatever. But I also like to share my art with everybody. Yeah. So I do art you can wear. Okay. Like, as you can see here, I'm wearing Ooh, uh, oh, my paintings nice. on my shirt. Nice, nice. And that's, uh, that's also on the same website. Okay. And um, I do, so not too long ago, a couple asked me to set up like a date for them. So I did like a sip and paint mm. intimate date for them Listen, at home. I'm going to be calling y'all yeah, for, I do that for this. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. I don't think you told us where we can find your art. Um, Instagram. Right now, What's your Instagram it's on name? Instagram, Ophelia Designs. Ophelia Designs, and okay. if you want to buy the coloring book, it's wahalaclothing.com. Wahala. That's where I sell my t-shirts okay, nice. and my books. And um, I can give you after or I can give you now? Which one is it? Oh, it, afterwards. After. See. So Let's I brought see. a shirt for you. Go. Um, respect my hustle. That's my movie, respect right? my no. Yeah. You know what? Let me see that shirt right now because <laughs> that hustle is about to be real when I put it on, y'all. Uh, you get you get some goodies today. Listen, yeah, I'm getting the good good. Yeah. So this is the movement. Eee. Respect my hustle. I like that. So what nice. Come on, no, this the the hustle hustle is the latest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on. That's, Listen. that's the real hustle. Hey, this the real hustle right you know, here. So make so it through them streets. You know about that latest life. If you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. Okay. Hey. Well, yeah. I just want to thank you guys for blessing us with your presence on the show today. Thank you. Um, I hope you guys definitely, you know, have some upcoming things that we can go to. Oh, um, definitely. Quickly, do y'all have anything? Uh, you Galleries? can catch me at the art, the, the uh, which one are you doing? <laughs> the Pancake and We're going to meet each other. The Pancake and Booze on the 23rd, Pancake right? Pancake and Booze, March 23rd. And okay. then I'm doing the chocolate and art 
in April. I don't remember the date, but if you look up Facebook Chocolate and Art, okay. you can find out. Um, for me, March 18th, Naked and Paint. Oh. Uh, March 23rd, Pancake and Booze. Then I have my painting class, Paint and Sip class. But mine is different, um, Paint and Suya. You know. Paint is... This thing. <laughs> March, 20, <laughs> March 24th and March 25th is um, Creative Canvas. Okay. Right. So, you know, we're artistic people working yeah yeah the hell out of march yes <laughs> i see that yeah. march madness march. Yeah. there you march go through march. okay yeah, march in through march. march in through march i like that i like that all right well this has been another episode of it's our time i want to thank our guests again you can yeah. find them at at ophili designs yes. and at art by abiola.com okay. uh, make sure you get your shirt get your coloring books get your art all those great things and make sure you follow them patronize them as well as follow us at It's Our Time Talk Show. Again, I'm your host, Eddie Young Oboe, and see you next time.